Is about to die, they will go to the witchcraft coven and exchange their lives for his own. And you see a young person will die. And when they are burying people those days, they will put torch on the left hand, put cutlass on the right hand. Don't let the person that kill you sleep. Pursue them everywhere. This man had the superior technology. When they bury them, the guy will go through sorcery and they will exhume the body. Oh, you people don't know wickedness. Some of my big brothers here. You will see people in the evening. Eh? Somebody will be walking. And then another person will be coming behind. That's a dead man. They remove them from the grave. And they carry them to a location where they are bound. Darkness. Sometimes when we were young. And these people are audacious. All those places where they drink brukutu. They will bring the person. will sit down. They will serve drink. He will look at it like this. It will empty. When they finish, they will walk with them away. And go and bind their soul. So that they can't torment them. And they will repeat it after four years. They will repeat it after another four years until the whole family is wiped out. When they now suspect those people, sometimes when they come for burial, they will beat the elders. And you see somebody confess, say, I am the one. Meanwhile, three people, four people have been killed. You know wickedness. I prophesy over you tonight. Everybody that has built a siege that you will not amount to anything. As the sun rises tomorrow, their stories end. I was speaking to a woman that had over five miscarriages. Seven months they will eat the child. Seven months they will eat the child. And this woman is weeping. That's their joy. They will pass. You will told you you will suffer until we came with judgmental prayers and the spirit of god struck some strong men in the house that was when the baby was able to cry so five destinies have been eaten up because of somebody's wickedness and what is the problem sometimes they say when she was married into this house she didn't come to honor us you are you are crazy who are you she didn't come to greet you because of that you will kill five innocent children that's the wickedness of men so when we are talking about these things it's because there are destinies that will not be realized except as god stretches his hand there are so many heroes that will not just die they will be struck with war they will decay on their throne imagine because he killed james and they saw that the team pleased the jews he wanted to kill peter you know who Peter is? Because he pleased the Jews. You want to kill Peter? And then if he kills Peter, he will go for, 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 for Paul. Such men, God stretches his hand. So that they don't just die, they rot. And their death becomes a tale in the, in the, in the wicked confraternity for others to tremble at the mightiness of God. Do you know how many gifted people who are standing here this evening who if they were to manifest even nigeria can be delivered but forces of darkness they will see you trekking for 30 years you will think they will have sympathy their conscience is like a a dead a, a rock they feel nothing in fact some of them when you trek and trek they will call you and give you cold water and say drink you will think they are nice. When you are going, they say you have not seen anything. You will still trek for another 30 years. That's the wickedness of man. I decree over you. Every strong man and every strong force standing against your destiny, they will go down for you this morning. Sit down for a moment. Those who say you will not succeed, they have made a mistake. Glory to God. 
And so when you look at Christians who are not necessarily making progress in life, the problem is not their condition. The condition is actually a byproduct of their problem. The condition is an alarm that they have a problem. The problem of many Christians is their ignorance, their inability to access the mysteries that are available to them. So for every one of us, we can access them if we are willing. Because the Bible said that according as his divine power, 2 Peter 1 verse 3 and 4, he said he has given unto us all things that pertains to life and godliness. All things has already been given to us. He said, but accessing it is through the knowledge of him that called us to glory and to virtue. If you read verse 4 of this scripture, it will literally scare you. Because when he spoke about glory and virtue, you think it's just an improved life. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about a class of existence that is at the level of divinity. Because verse 4 he said, Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. He said that by this we might be partakers, partakers of the divine nature. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through loss. So glory and virtue here is not an upgraded life. It's actually an, a divine life. Is the ability to express the divine life that's why i tell you most of the times that christianity is divinity expressed through humanity god wants us to function at the class and the realm of god but the key is knowledge he said according as his divine power he has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness and all these things is to bring us to glory and virtue but he said it's through the knowledge and so if we don't have knowledge we'll have a problem and this is why for the last four to five weeks we've been studying spiritual principles and realities that gives us an advantage as we walk through life he said these signs shall follow them that believe we need to carry signs supernatural signs that even if they hate us they can't stop us they will die with their pains they will die with their wickedness but there is a circumference of the supernatural around your life that their hatred and wickedness can do nothing about it because you have a reverse protocol when they set up darkness you all tie it to light because you carry the power for signs and wonders it is the operation of the hand of god come to that point where god breaks out of you in a way that even if your generation hates you you will fulfill destiny how do you think jesus succeeded even the ones he healed turned against him but their, their animosity counted for nothing because what support was upon his life was superior to the, fourth, the, the contrary force of his generation. It's the hand of God. And you will not leave this meeting until those dimensions are provoked in your life. You will come to a point where even if your whole father's house hates you, you will become bigger than your whole father's house. You will come to a point where even if your state hates you, you will become bigger than your state. You will come to a point where even if your country hates you, you will become bigger than your country. Did you not read about Jabez? A whole nation despised him. First his father's house, then his nation. But something came upon his life. The elders of Israel gathered and went to beg him, come and help us. I prophesy over someone. The hand of God will make a wonder out of your life that you will become bigger than your adversaries put together. If they are in your father's house, you will become bigger than your father's house. If they are in your state, you become bigger than your state. If they are in your nation, you become bigger than your nation. In the name of Jesus. Study the life of Isaac. The Philistines hated him. But the man was unstoppable. A point came, he became so big that the kings came to him and said, You are bigger than us. That's the testimony of somebody from this service. When the hand of God goes into manifestation, creative power the power of creation is released you will discover that what was not can be introduced into the equation you know that that's the hand of god at work did you remember when king hezekiah received the judgment that he was going to die and the man turned and wept and told the lord i have served you with a perfect heart the bible said before the prophet walked out of the place God told him, go back. Tell him, I've added 15 years to his life. He didn't say, I've given him 15 years. He said, I've added 15 years to his life. So if he was to live 60, I've made it 75. That means you will not only die, 
you will live to your age but i've added 15 years to that lifestyle so there is addition what was not is brought into equation it's called the hand of god and we will need there are times when you need those dimensions for things that are not see there are some of us here that some things are happening in your life that were not part of your prophetic destiny did you read your bible the parable of the talent he gave one five talent the guy traded and got another five he said take ten cities the one that he gave one didn't do anything when the master came he now gave a law he said to him that has and desires to have more he said him that does not have and does not desire to have he said let the little he has be taken from him and give it to the one that has and want to have more that means that one that that thing was not part of his destiny but there is a recalculation of possibilities in human interaction that something what was in this man's destiny was to rule 10 cities but somebody else had one city and he didn't do anything with it god now said your destiny because of your success is to rule 10 cities now we are making it 11 because somebody has failed so we are taking from him and adding to you this is not part of your your ordination but we are adding to your ordination so there's a possibility where what was not in your destiny can be brought in those are creative powers and only when the hand of god manifests will such things happen because it's one thing to be delivered it's another thing to manifest a glorious destiny there are dimensions in your life that will be provoked when the hand of god comes upon you he said the hand of god came upon something he took the gate of the city and climbed to a rock and kept it there on the mountain supernatural feet is carried out by the hand of god when you see the life of people commanding certain excellencies that you can't explain know that something happens to them it's called the hand of god that's why the apostles prayed in acts 4 30 31 it says stretch forth your hand that signs and wonders may be done in the name of thy holy child and in 33 he said and the lord bore them witness by signs and wonders and he said great grace was upon them some of us need to manifest brilliant colors that men cannot gain say. There are certain dimensions that will come out of you. Some of you is dimensions of wisdom. In Africa here that they say nothing good can come out of. You can create something that the white man will, will take reference from. Some of you is favor. Favor that opens doors of nations. Commands the allegiance of kings. It's the hand of God. When it comes upon your life, you become a wonder to your generation. And how many of us need to be wonders? There are so, so many times in life when you are overwhelmed. Oh, you've tried everything and nothing is working. Either because your adversaries are superior to you or because the systems have rebelled against you. There are many who have been there. Everything you told them to do, they have worked hard. They have worked smartly. They have honored people that they should honor. Everything, they have been faithful. Faithful for decades. But what is working for others is not working for them. And everything they need to do, they have done. But nothing is happening. In such situation, God comes in to balance the equation. He brings his sovereignty. Because if he doesn't, there are certain people that the justice system will not favor. And so when God sees that, what God does is that he releases his hand. So that he adds speed to their life. Although, if I leave you, this thing may take you a lifetime and you will not get there. But there is a system in the spirit. I can put speed on you that you didn't merit. I can put speed on you that is not a function of your energy. It's not a function of your calculation. It's called the hand of God. And those who know how to provoke the hand of God. This is what happens in their life and others sit down and they are angry. This person just came yesterday. Why is he the one doing this? It's the hand of God. Don't fight. Go and look for the secrets. you see this are spirit the spirit realm is a deep realm it's not everything that we can sit down <laughs> you know these things i'm even sharing i'm careful to say it because if you don't say it where well it, it can become like a blasphemy of some sort but these are realities in the spirit realm i'm telling you they are deep realities in the spirit realm you find certain people forgotten at the back 30 years you think their life is over 40 years you think their life is over suddenly the hand of god comes upon them they move to the front and they do in three years what their colleagues use 50 years to do 
and then you are wondering what is going on is the operation of the hand of god this is why you need the hand of god in your life it is an expression of his sovereignty and within the context of god's sovereignty it can be wrong he is not violating the law but is transcending the law and the hand of the lord was upon elijah that was all even if he was lame it's not a factor it's no longer about legs it's no longer about what you are writing and the hand of god was upon elijah and he gathered up his loins and ran ahead of ahab even to the entrance of jezreel this was elijah that said go tell ahab to go there will be abundance of rain and he was still there now you know that the king has the best chariot the king doesn't ride the same horse as anybody the best of the chariots is what the kings ride and king has gone ahead long ago and suddenly and the hand of the law was upon elijah and the king turned and saw somebody passing meet me at the gate meet me at the gate what's going on here he was functioning at another frequency if the hand of god doesn't come on you in some aspect of your life if god is merciful it's your children that will take over because the warfare that has been ganged up against you your revelation can't undo it your faith can't handle it and these people want to kill you and kill your son and frustrate your grandson how can you turn the table around except by the hand of god they went and locked you with a padlock and somebody is finding it every day every day and you don't have faith to deal with it you don't have consecration to deal with it and 30 years have passed you are already old your son is also growing old your grandson too is going into is going beyond teenage age have you not seen people like that father is 75 son is 59 grandson is 42 all of them are looking at themselves like this three generations in one house and the enemy will not stop sometimes what god does he just puts his hand upon one of them and three generations are recovered in one day that's the power of the hand of god see there are some things that happen to you hmm? even if you are delivered your life has been wasted have you not seen people who are receiving deliverance at 80 the person is 76 that's when he was delivered what will you do at 76 your life has already gone but when the hand of god comes it injects speed into your life the way it does it is number one it can trigger restoration that means all the seasons that passed the hand of god can cause all of them to pass in one day seasons that took 10 10 10 years to pass 440 years season can pass in one day so that your whole world can be replayed in one day and you can maximize it or it can move you ahead of time so that you can achieve in one day what you couldn't achieve in 40 years it's a technology of the spirit how do you think god would have carried elijah into the city no horse could do it nothing could make it happen but when the hand of god comes the laws of nature are suspended the laws are suspended the guy outran you can be better than the king if the hand of god comes upon you i meet some people who are in ministry they've been in ministry for 30 years they've not even as much as one up to 50 souls they don't even have where to keep the few souls they have to teach the word of god not because they are not sound forces lock them when the hand of god comes on a man's life you will see this person who couldn't make progress in 30 years suddenly in three months the whole outcome changes and you are wondering why did the partner suddenly appear why the resources suddenly show up why did the miracles all started happening overnight it's the hand of god sit down for a moment see i began by telling you the secret things belongs to god but the things that are revealed they belong to us and to our children forever
there are certain men that if you forgive them is a plague of humanity but you cannot become angry and say i won't forgive them so you need god who is the judge to come in the one who has the right to judge to move to move there are some enemies that if they refuse to repent they must die they must die that's why i tell you these things are mysteries if i'm teaching you doctrine and i'm talking from the standpoint of the new creation i will tell you mercy forgiveness but when god comes in he's the one that decides what he can do and sometimes when he comes in the thing is suffer not the wheat to leave their head has to be cut off that's when you know the place of the hand of god can i tell you something there are some people in your family that if they don't die the next generation nobody will rise you will find 20 young men all of them graduates no job he has got into a tree there are padlocks on those trees destinies of young men and women are there and you are forgiving and forgiving and forgiving but he can't repent from his wickedness if god who is the judge does not come in and say your cup is full there will be problem this is why from time to time the hand of god needs to mantle men so that judgment will come exodus 3 verse 20 it said i will stretch forth my hands and i will judge egypt i will strike them with all my signs and my wonders i will judge the gods of egypt i will kill all their firstborn son it's not within the right of moses to say all the firstborn sons should die but when the sovereign comes he's just when he shows up he's right imagine a woman who has been dating somebody's husband for 12 years there has not been peace the woman's children can't go to school because this foolish husband will carry the whole money and go and spend on this woman who is not his wife and this woman does not want to repent god takes her to many meetings they are rebuking people who are breaking homes her heart is like rock and somebody else is weeping and crying her children's destinies have been frustrated meanwhile there's one stupid girl who is buying iphones every year with the money that should train children of another family and you think god will show up when those boys become thieves there will be a problem to society but it's not their fault that they are thieves it's because their father was foolish and a jezebel trapped him under her armpit those are times when the monarch will show up and they will kill that kind of girl and kill her as an example so that others like her will not try it you will be pained but you can't kill her because you are not god but there are times when the hand of god show up and when the hand of god show up you will see prophets will rise it will become judgment and the people will die shamefully it does not contradict the spirit of grace it is the sovereignty of god that is at work acts of the apostles 13 go and read the bible paul was talking to a governor trying to win this man to jesus and a sorcerer who has kept that city in bondage was withstanding Paul. He will talk the man will counter. He will talk the man will counter. Don't you want this land to be saved? Men are that wicked. And then suddenly, the hand of God moved and saw so turned and said, Listen, the hand of God is upon you. You son of wickedness. He said, You shall be blind for a season. And immediately the man was struck. Listen, our enemies, some of them cannot repent, they must be judged. Because their presence is an affliction to society. I speak over you. Every dimension of God that needs to appear. For the enemies of your destiny. Who refuse to repent to God. May it come upon you now. Sit down for a moment. Let me round up. Although the hand of God is the sovereign expression of God's authority. It can be provoked. It can be provoked. This is why some people live a superior life. Because they know what to do to provoke the hand of God. The first way to provoke the hand of God is by deliberately asking for it in your life. See, this is why most of you that pray in tongues is good. Though. In fact, Paul said we should pray in tongues more than we pray in our understanding. But don't make the mistake of only praying in tongues. Pray in your understanding also. I encourage praying more in tongues i teach it and i've taught it over and over if you can't pray in tongues because you can't be wrong praying in tongues when you pray in tongues you pray the mind of god 
but also learn to pray your understanding there are many christians who can't pray their understanding for five minutes and so most of the specific things that they need to make demand for in faith they never do look at the apostles acts 4 look at read it from verse 26 the hand of god is provoked in prayer so when you see people that things happen in their lives they sponsor it in prayer verse 30 is my emphasis he said by stretching forth thy hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done in the name of thy holy child they knew that the hand of god could be provoked and the way to provoke it is by making demand in prayer listen when you come into a place where you don't have what it takes to contend better make demand on the hand of god father stretch your hands arise oh god let your enemies be scattered there are times to pray those prayers there are times when you function by your authority as a believer you are literally invincible but there are other times where you will have to make demand lord where is thy mighty hand what was gideon's lamentation he said where is the god that did wonders with our fathers you can't pray that prayer and be standard most people that you see god supernaturally intervening in their matter god intervenes like that not because he's biased towards them it's because they know how to place demand most of us don't know how to place demand things are going haywire you are there saying it is where what is where they want to disgrace you they want to frustrate you they want to shut you down your eyes are open one year is passed two years passed three years passed four years five years you are there saying it is where it is not where arise oh lord let thy enemies be scattered stretch forth thy hands do signs and wonders bring judgment upon the wicked let your counsel find expression men who see the hand of god this is what they pray we provoke it somebody will provoke the hand of god today this stomach ache that will never go this stagnation that will not go this reproach that will not go father everybody and every force that has risen up against me may they be scattered by your hand tonight you will pray it see it's not what we do all the time but there are times when we do it so that we can occasion divine intervention on the scale of a sovereign when you find a spiritual man who is skilled he can open up any dimension of god that he wants you can come for certain service because you are present in that service you will leave and discover that the whole of that month you are having victory and dominion everywhere the guy knew what he touched you can come for other services and for the whole of that month you are weeping and repenting weeping and repenting for the whole month the person who was on the altar knew what he was dealing with he can enter the economy of god's face and that month can be a month of transformation he can enter the economy of god's feet that month can be a month of dominion all of that is a function of spiritual intelligence and every christian must understand how to access the different dimensions of god there are people who are so transformed they live so holy but they are defeated in life because the principles that govern transformation is different from the principle that govern dominion and there are people who are dominating everywhere in life but they can't manage their appetites if you bring them into business they take over bring them into a territory they take over but they are struggling with iniquity because they have understood how to access the dominion dimension but they don't know the transformative dimension one is the feet of god the other is the face of god they don't understand this and they don't know why their life is full of contradiction power yet functioning in different dimensions look at this electricity for instance the same current one is producing sound another is producing code are you seeing the, the difference another is producing illumination but same current as we are sitting in this auditorium if everywhere is lit and there's no sound we'll be frustrated in this service the problem is not that current is not available the problem is that we have been able to access only one dimension and there will be light here but nothing will happen and then if we have light and volume and these ACs go off <laughs> in 10 minutes half of the people here will go out those who will remain will be martyrs <laughs> you will sweat here and you'll be wondering see some people will even faint because of the sweat is current lacking no dimension converters are lacking and that's the problem with many christians some of you have so much light in your life but you don't have volume some of you have so much light 
but you don't have air conditioning system. So you have your light, you have your volume, you are screaming and shouting, but you are dying. If they don't hurry, you will faint there. We need to understand the laws, the protocols of accessing all of the dimensions of God. So don't be holy and suffer. And don't have dominion and be sinful. You need the balance, but there are protocols. Glory to God. Number two, how do you provoke the hand of God? By receiving prophetic words. Because most times when God speaks, he stretches his hand to back it up. Ezekiel 1 verse 3. The word of the Lord came expressly unto Ezekiel the priest, the son of Buzah, in the land of the Chaldeans by the river Kiba. And the hand of the Lord was there upon him. Oh my God. You don't know why Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. If you are careless when God is speaking, you will lose everything. Most times, the move of God's power are strongest when God is talking. Because God will not allow his word fall to the ground. So he releases all his sovereignty to defend the integrity of his word. That's why one of the easiest way to see God's hand is when he speaks. Those of us who are ministers, we know. When you are operating like this and teaching, and you start picking words of knowledge that's the easiest way to see power because if god says it and you pick it it happens at such a speed that is unbelievable the psalmist say once has the lord spoken he said but twice i heard that power belongs to god when god speaks his hand is released and this is why every christian must master how to receive god's word for some of you you receive god's word in the way in the place of worship some of you receive God's word in the place of prayer. Some of you receive God's word as teachings go on like this. Any system that sponsors God's word in your direction, addict yourself to it. Because if the hand of God will follow you, it is from the place of the word of God. Some of us receive God's word when we are quiet in prayer. That's why my prayers, 90% of the time, I'm alone. Sometimes even light is noise. I off everywhere when it is dark, I hide there. And I'm communing with God and the walls keep dropping. Because I live, you shall live also. And when that word drops, oh Jesus, you will rise up and all the forces of heaven will begin to work in your favor. God will tell you, you will. Sometimes they even come in form of visions. You will just see yourself operating in certain dimensions. And as you wake up from there, forces are mobilized to make it happen. Because the hand of God has gone to work. Most of us don't see the hand of God because we are barren of the word of God. If the word comes, the hand will show. Isaiah 8 verse 11 For the Lord spoke unto me with a strong hand The Lord spoke unto me with a strong hand He can't speak without his hand His hand always goes forth when he speaks You want to provoke God's hand? Open yourself to the Rema world When the Rema world comes, the hand comes If you want to know him, you will have to know him in different layers of glory like John went to the Isle of Patmos and couldn't recognize the man he was working with for three and a half years. Because at that point when Jesus spoke, it wasn't now a conversation between brethren. It was government express. And he said his voice was like the sound of many waters. So if you want to study the voice of God, you may need to go deep into scripture to understand what the voice of God means. That means if you don't know God's government, you don't know his voice. Even if he talks to you, you don't know his voice. Until you begin to tremble because you know that his voice is government you have not known the voice you can articulate few scriptures and say when god talks i can pick it it doesn't mean you know it you know the voice of god the day the voice of god becomes government to you and that may take you deep studies in scripture and in the spirit to know it when jesus ascended to heaven he didn't break the law of gravity he just went higher he went higher so the hand of god causes you to function at higher realms at higher threshold so that laws and principles can bind you. It's an operation in the spirit. See, our Christianity will become consequential. When in addition to the principles we practice, we also begin to take advantage of the mysteries that are available to us. The hand of God. It gives a man speed. Number three, how do you provoke the hand of God? By yielding to the Holy Spirit. Second Kings 3 verse 15. Elisha wanted the hand of God to come upon him. He said, but now bring me a minstrel. He said, and it came to pass. He said, when the minstrel played, that the hand of God came upon him. 
everything that moves or provokes the move of the spirit causes the manifestation of the hand of God. Most of us don't know these things. See, men are powerful to the degree of their understanding. If you understand anything, it puts power on your life. Because you can wield dimensions at will. At will. At will. So a man who wants to see the hand of God every month can provoke it. If he's engaging the altar and making demand, making demand, and it's not showing forth, he begins to create atmospheres for the move of the spirit. If he doesn't show forth, he begins to open himself to the word of God. He's studying the word, he's listening to sermon. One way or the other, something must activate it. And then every month, you see that man scaling heights, scaling heights. And you are wondering, how is your life like this? There's something he's activating. This is Christianity. Christianity is not coming to church to gather in a multitude. Christianity is for people to have an intimate walk with God so that God can manifest through them. So much so that anywhere they appear, it's as though God has appeared. That is Christianity. The hand of God. The hand of God. You need it. I need it. Sometimes the people you think are doing well, they need it more. Because you will not even see battle until you start making impact. You are at the floor, you say you are fighting. Come up. And then you see the real battles. There are weapons that are not made for failures. There are certain weapons that are only designed for champions. If you use it on failures, it's a waste. And Satan knows that. You are already failing without any attack. You think Satan will use his best weapons on you? He's looking for that guy who has a vision to take a nation. And he's looking for that guy who has the audacity and the temerity to follow through that vision. And he sees the guy makes one impact two impact three impact the next time hell will rise up if we leave this one it will cost us a lot of pain that we'll not recover from but you know what everybody listening to me here tonight is a champion and that's why all of us need the provocation of the hand of god can we pray in the spirit for one minute and make specific demand father let your hand manifest upon my life father release your hand upon my life father stretch forth your hand over my circumstance can we pray like people who want to see manifestation sovereignty to show up in the form of authority it's called the hand of god imagine a sister that a witch in the village had put a spell on and she didn't marry until she's 55 or she's 60. which one is a testimony is it a marriage or is it to die in peace even if she gets married do you know the warfares that are already accumulated even if she gets married at 60, number one, people will be talking. It may be difficult for her to have peace. Number two, she may not be able to give birth. 
because the biological gateways are shut down number three the person she gets married to if that person continues to love her in the midst of the talk of people it will be by the mercy of god so which one without that kind of person call a miracle if not for the hand of god but the way god does it if god enters the matter she will not just get married she will give birth the same year she will not just give birth god will now bless them financially relocate them to a place where they will live like kings where nobody can even come close to talk all the people that will come close we need help and they will help them so you will see that 20 miracles happening at the same time that is the hand of god so your life is colored and when she gives birth she won't give birth to one she'll give birth to four and all of those children when they are 19 they have all graduated from the university one is doctor one is lawyer one is prophet another one is governor and then you understand that the years that the palmer worm has eaten the year that the caterpillar worm has eaten the year that the locust worm has eaten has been gathered together and shot into that person's destiny there are things that oh it's not i exercise faith i exercise faith is that god showed up there are certain iniquity in people's lives certain wickedness in people's life that god will say let's go down and see this one if we leave it for their faith the battle is too much you don't you know you have some battles they are too many that even though you are experiencing victory the victory are inconsequential you will need 10 20 things to happen at the same time to be able to overrun the crisis that you are in that's why you need the hand of god that's why you need the hand of god i was watching a documentary the other time a man was wrongly accused and was sentenced to prison it was after i think 30 years or so that they some of you know some of those sites that that they brought the case file out and vindicated him when he went to prison and came back civilization had changed there was no internet when he went to prison there was no handset now what will he do even the training and the education he had when he went to prison is no longer relevant for the world he's coming into so he, is there is that a, a miracle unless god does many things at the same time that's why you need the hand of god i don't know where you are but i prophesy over someone in this month of september the hand of god will come upon you